Welcome. Welcome to uh, my classroom. Uh, we refer to it sometimes as the flipped classroom, and the purpose of this little video is to explain to you why we call it that thing. Uh, for me, the flipped classroom is the best answer to the question on the screen right now. What's the best use of my face-to-face -face time with students? How best do I spend time, the uh, 80, 81 minutes a day that I have with students? Typically, in a uh, traditional classroom, the way things had been done when uh, I was in school, when you were in school, is that class time, particularly in a math class, was spent with uh, introducing new material. New material was introduced, you spent your time uh, in class basically sort of passively listening, taking notes, watching the teacher solve problem. Maybe towards the end of class you got time to work on some practice problems, but for the most part that practice happened at home for homework. And then uh, what happens over time is that, let's put a pen here, that's the pen, that's the pen I want. Uh, what happens over time is the next day the students come in with questions. Uh, so the beginning of class is spent answering those questions. And then that moves the new material down a little bit uh, later on in the class. Questions maybe take up a little more time depending on how many questions we have. And then, you know, the new concept, the, that time practicing goes away. So in the flipped class, what we do is the homework is where we introduce the new material in the form of a video. And the time that we spend in class is where we now practice the new concepts. Oops, that was uh, totally not what I wanted to do. Let's try it again. There we go. That should work. Okay, so we flip the sequence of the sequence of learning. The new material is available. Uh, available offline and we practice in class so that while I'm there to help them when they struggle, the students have the help available. And uh, just going to intersperse throughout here some comments from students that have experienced the flipped class. And that's part of what we're after is we want students to be able to learn. It's really all we're after. So a little bit about my history with the flipped classroom. It started back in the uh, spring of 2011 when a student said, as I was trying to explain a problem to them towards the end of class, oh, never mind, I, I can just find the answer. I, I'll look it up on the internet. Uh, at that point, I was new to Twitter, and I came across a tweet that referenced something about the flipped class. I followed that along, led me to a couple of guys out in Colorado, um, John Bergman and Aaron Sams, who started the flipped classroom basically to uh, account for sports and absences. Colorado's a fairly vast state like Vermont, and when their kids had to leave for athletic contests, they had to leave school early. And in order to allow those students to not miss class, they started recording their lectures. And for kids that were absent, they started recording their lectures. And what they discovered was that kids that were there started watching the lectures at home, and they decided, well, this might be a, might be something that, that really will work out. And so they started flipping their sequence and doing the recording before class, and then spending their time, in this case, their chemistry teachers, doing the chemistry lab and the chemistry work with the students. Uh, that spring I jumped into it with my AP Calculus class as just a trial version on one unit that we had and they loved it. Uh, from there I started with my Math 2 class and that was a class that um, really changed their personality, it changed the stress level in the room. One of the comments that came out of that particular class was that uh, no, one, no one gets left behind or held back. That was what they, a student commented that they loved about the flipped classroom. Uh, last year, I ran the entire year with my calculus and AP calculus class and with Math 1 with the flipped class, and uh, the stress level was reduced. The amount of learning was was just just good. Kids were moving along uh, at their own pace, making sure that we learned things, and I was there to help with them, help them with it. It was the best use of our time together. All right, so the way the class works is, as we said, at home, students watch a video. I provide note sheets for them to keep notes as they go along uh, with the videos in class. They have questions, there's guided practice, there's extension, there's projects. What we use the in-class in class time for is well, we want to change the information that they get at home into knowledge. We want to dem have them demonstrate understanding of what's going on. I don't want kids just, I don't want my students just doing math. I want them to actually learn math. I want them to understand math. I want them to be able to transfer the math. So we do a variety of activities in class. I'm there to work with the students when they have the questions person that uh, hopefully can help them is there. 
Some advantages that we found, I've mentioned the reduced stress, I've mentioned the increased direct contact. Um, with a video lecture, students have the ability to pause and rewind. If they're not sure what I'm talking about, they can pause, they can think about it, they can rewind, they can watch it again if they need to. So they can't do that in class because, well, I don't rewind very well. I'm happy to always answer questions, but you know, sometimes people are shy about asking their questions. Uh, help is available when it's needed. And for math, that bad learning is reduced. If a student goes home and does 25 problems the wrong way, it's really hard to unlearn that wrong way. You know, we have to unlearn the wrong way and then remind them what the correct way of doing it is. Where if they're working in class in front of me, I catch them with the, you know, the mistakes. I clear up their misconceptions as they're happening and so we reduce that bad learning piece. Another student comment for you. And we had students watching the videos, you know, several times while they were doing their homework or before tests or before exams or anything like that. So all, possible, all the, the resources are always out there. Uh, some concerns that folks have are the technology, you know, like we don't have internet access at home and what if the homework doesn't get done? What, what if they don't watch the video? Technology-wise, we have ways to work around that. Um, I can put the videos onto a thumb drive, I can put the videos onto a DVD, students can use computers in the school during work, during support block or any other time during the day. And if it comes down to it, sometimes students will just watch the video at the start of class and it gives them a little less time to do the, uh, to do the work. Um, if technology, if technology is an issue. The homework not done, same thing. If their homework is not done, they generally will start the class by spending the first 15 minutes watching the video, getting the notes, and then join the rest of the class. At least they're moving forward. If in the past, past uh, practice, if the homework wasn't done, we move forward anyway. They may not have had the benefit of having any idea what we were doing, but then we just built on it. This way, they're able to move forward with us. It goes back to that no one gets left behind or held back theory. And so that's another plus is that we're actually, we were talking about flipping. We did flip the sequence of events. Uh, really what we're trying to do is flip the responsibility for learning. So the students are able to learn when they need to, when they can, when they can squeeze that 15 minute video in. Sometimes it's on a bus on the way to a game. Sometimes it's uh, right before class. But they're taking the responsibility to get that information done and to know what they need to know to be able to demonstrate. So we're, we're flipping the responsibility for learning back to the students. They're not passively sitting and hearing me jabber on for however, however much time and then going, okay, I think I understand, I will try it. They have to make sure that they understand from the video, and then they're actively making sure that they can do the problems. It's not about uh, getting the work done, it's about learning the math. If you have questions, you uh, can feel free to shoot me an email. That's my email right there. You can call the school at uh, 849-6711. Uh, if you want to know what I'm thinking about on Twitter, that's my Twitter handle, at jtag252. If you want to know more about Flip Class, you can uh, search the hashtag pound flip class on Twitter. Uh, you're always welcome to stop in, ask your students, Anything that you need to do to clarify, it's a uh, we're excited about learning with a flip class. It's working out really well for us, and we hope that uh, your student will find it find it works for them. And if it doesn't, please let me know. We'll try to make it. We'll do what we can to adjust. Thanks for watching, and uh, we look forward to hearing from you.